The option of calling a mayday must be in a firefighter's experience bank in order to come naturally when that firefighter finds him or herself in a life-threatening situation. A mayday must also be called immediately in order to have the best chance at preserving life. So why do firefighters still avoid or delay doing it? The answer can be found by looking to the sky. Just as firefighters must call for a mayday when they're in danger, military fighter pilots are required to eject from their aircraft if they are in danger. Both firefighters and fighter pilots are taught to be aggressive, and they both want to win. Their stakes are high. Other people's lives, as well as their own, depend on their actions. Obviously, ejection is taken very seriously. No pilot wants to lose their aircraft or their life. But unlike calling the mayday, there are regulations in place that dictate exactly when pilots must eject. This set of rules dictates exactly when a pilot or crew member has to eject. They are written as if-then logic statements. For example, if the plane is out of control at 10,000 feet, then eject. If the nose gear is not down, then eject. If you lose hydraulic pressure, then eject. Each type of aircraft can have a different set of ejection parameters. Pilots have to memorize these rules and periodically recertify in order to keep flying. These regulations are not optional. If a pilot or crew member is confronted with an ejection parameter and does not eject, but survives, they are actually disciplined for not ejecting. Unfortunately, even with all the standards, drills, and parameters that are set out for them, some fighter pilots still do not make the decision to eject when they should. What could possibly keep them from choosing to save their own life? The answer may lie in a military study. Through extensive research, they have identified 10 reasons why pilots or crew members may delay or fail to eject. Keep in mind that these may also be the same factors that keep many firefighters from calling a mayday. Temporal distortion, or the perception that time seems to speed up or slow down. Reluctance to give up control. Channeled attention. A loss of situational awareness. The choice not to eject may stem from fear, fear of the unknown, or fear of retribution. It could be a lack of knowledge, attempts to fix the problem themselves, pride, or denial. And it's often very hard for firefighters to, to take that step, hey, I need help out of this situation because of the bravado, the egos. Yeah. Firefighters, we don't need help, we give help. <laughs> We're here to save the people, and people we don't see people saving us. People are very reluctant to call a mayday for the fear that they might be just terrorized the rest of their career in the fire service by people making fun of them or making jokes or being the butt of somebody's joke. And really they have to get beyond that because this is not a practical joke where, yeah, no one got hurt, no one got killed. This is a life and death situation that they really need to take a lot more seriously and not worry so much about the fact that, you know, their ego may get bruised because the fact is they may die, if, you know, and you'd rather have a bruised ego than be dead. A pilot who ejects cannot take back that decision, but a firefighter can cancel a mayday at any time. And just like the guidelines for military flight crews are in place to save their lives, the guidelines for calling a mayday are intended to save the lives of firefighters. We keep fighting and fighting and fighting, never give up, and that's a good thing. But when the building's giving you up, you need to declare that mayday. Just like the fighter pilot must eject. We can replace the airplane. We can't replace the pilot. We don't want the firefighter to die, so we need to be able to get him out. You did nothing wrong. The building is giving you up. You must declare a mayday. There's a lot we can learn from the way that the military trains their fighter pilots in ejection parameters. They have to demonstrate 100% proficiency in every aircraft they may fly, and they have to demonstrate that proficiency every six months. We need to do the same thing as firefighters in demonstrating the mastery for when we should call a mayday. We have discussed, or we are discussing in this lesson plan, four different triggering events. Those need to be ingrained in us until we demonstrate 100% mastery, at least annually. 
Let's go to Cleburne, Texas, where there is a company called trainingdivision.com. They're teaching firefighters today how to master those Mayday parameters. In May of 2005, 23 firefighter recruits battled smoke, fire, and 100 degree Texas heat as their instructors put them through training situations that simulated hazardous, life endangering situations and required them to make the decision to call for help. We did feel it was very, very important uh, for all firefighters, rookie firefighters, to learn from day one about Mayday and how to call it. Under live fire conditions, we will put them in a mayday parameter where they become lost or trapped and they have to implement the mayday. Just adds another level of stress they get used to calling if they ever need it. So what exactly are these situations that require a firefighter to call a mayday? Under what circumstances must they call the rapid intervention crew to intervene and come after them? According to basic mayday doctrine being developed, if firefighters find themselves in any of the following four positions, they must call a mayday. If they fall, if something collapses on top of them, if they get lost or trapped, if they are stuck. Yeah, I'm stuck in this room. We had to come up with parameters for firefighters. If this happens, then call mayday. So through group process and just study of line of duty death reports, we came up with a, with a series of parameters, specifically in the beginning for a single family dwelling, because everybody goes to a single family dwelling. Things that could happen to you in almost any kind of occupancy. When you get into a mayday situation, it can be very disorienting, very, very stressful. The firefighter needs to realize that they need to call for help immediately in those situations, because they might not be able to get out quick and they might need help. Remember, a mayday can always be canceled if it turns out not to be needed. But in one of these four dangerous positions, getting the RIC team on their way in the meantime could mean the difference between life and death. One of the excuses firefighters give us in terms of why they don't want to call mayday, they may say, well, I could get myself out right after I called it. Well, that's okay, but you don't know that. Uh, if you fall through a floor, your adrenaline's flowing, you may see the exit within five feet of you. But we say you still need to call that mayday because you don't know what's going on in the other part of the building, you don't know if you're injured, your air is running out, you're disoriented, and something has gone wrong. By declaring the mayday, the RIT team is on its way, you can still try to self-rescue yourself, and if you get to the back door and meet the RIT team, fine, no harm, no foul. If you get out before they get there, you can always call command and cancel the mayday. Command received. Firefighter Baker, engine one, self-executing. We'd rather cancel the RIC team than not have it when we need it. Which of the following conditions is considered a Mayday emergency? Is it A, when there's a loss of water pressure on the fire hose? Is it B, when the low air alarm on the SCBA unit activates? How about C, when a firefighter falls through a roof or floor? Or is it D, in case of a radio malfunction during a fire attack? The clear answer course is at C, when a firefighter falls through a roof or floor. Falling whatever you may be falling through is one of the four mayday parameters. While the other answers may be part of what causes a mayday to be called, falling through a floor or roof constitutes a call for mayday all by itself. Training on these four mayday parameters are critical. Whether you're trapped, whether you're ensnared, you've fallen, there's a collapse, all of those have to trigger an immediate response in calling a mayday. This is called recognition prime decision making. All this training and the purpose of these drills is to make that automatic in your mind so that when it happens, you're gonna have the right response. You're practicing the skills that will save your life in a crisis.